When buried under the difficulties of facing and dealing with life, we tend to reach out blindly for help. If we're lucky, we find our way not just to therapy but also to the right therapist. There is no shame in getting help from a professional. After all, life is hard. When we're unable to cope, why not ease the burden? What might shock you is that therapists sometimes need this help too. They, unlike what we might envision, are not robots and have to navigate life as well. And even though they are fully equipped to guide us while we figure out our lives, those tools may not help them have the same clarity. Lori Gottlieb, in this thought-provoking and touching book, shares her experience of getting therapy along with her patients and her process of helping them. As you read, you will discover the unique perspectives of both therapist and patient and their parallels. At the end of the day, this book shows us how we are all of us only human. We all want to believe that we don't need therapy. Sure, life is difficult and it can be tough to cope, but do I really need that kind of help? Truthfully, there should be no shame in getting therapy. There is, after all, no shame in being human. Therapy helps to reveal our shared humanity so that we can see ourselves more clearly. It helps us confront the demons that decide to visit. Like everyone else, we get affected and stressed out by the process of life. The four ultimate concerns that we may all have are death, isolation, freedom, and meaninglessness. There is no true hierarchy of pain. It is possible that we feel weak and guilty for seeking help to deal with a problem when others may be facing extreme poverty or salvation. But it doesn't mean that our suffering doesn't matter. Besides, belittling our problems does nothing to solve it. But therapy, accepting and figuring out our problems, is what will solve it. In essence, therapy helps you to see your humanity through the lens of someone else. It guides you through the depths of your thoughts, a scary place to be sure while holding the hand of someone you can trust. When you go into therapy, your initial condition will be assessed. A common question you will encounter is what brings you here. This is what becomes your presenting problem. This can be any number of things. For example, stress, not being able to sleep, a personal crisis, always wanting to cry, and more. Anything that motivates you to take that step to start therapy can be accepted as your presenting problem. The thing is, though, unbeknownst to us, the presenting problem isn't always accurate. To be more precise, the presenting problem could be just one aspect of a larger problem, the tip of the iceberg rather than the iceberg itself. There are even times when the presenting problem has nothing to do with the real underlying problem at all, but just a red herring. Nevertheless, it does the job of getting us through the door to therapy, though it might take a longer and more circuitous route to get out later on. Even when we go for therapy, the work to be done is highly challenging. This is essential because to get better, we need to change. Worse, we need to be the ones to change ourselves. It's said that the first step to solving a problem is admitting you have one. Unfortunately, we are all very good at filtering out the things that we don't want to look at, relying on our established defenses or distractions to continue this ignorance. This is because we're scared. At least we know what we're getting when things stay the same. For change to occur, we need to give up the known and embrace uncertainty, no easy task. And so, we do everything in our power to keep hold of what's familiar. We might even go so far as to sabotage ourselves in our journey of getting better. This is, wrongly assumed by us, much better than trying and failing. We've all had an experience where we've almost succeeded. And those times tend to hurt much more than not trying at all. What makes a therapist qualified to help us deal with our problems? If there's anything that this book shows, it's that therapists are human and make mistakes themselves. If they need help, then who are they to help us? Ironically, this is exactly what makes therapists qualified to help us. They have the experience of being human, too. That they were taught various theories and techniques relating to the human psyche certainly helps, but beyond that expertise is their own experience. Plus, they have the benefit of not being too close to the subject, ourselves. Therapists use, not suppress, their emotions to guide how the treatment goes. It will take time and effort to find the right therapist. Our relationship with them is of the highest priority, so someone you're not comfortable with won't help. Some therapists just can't help us, the way there are some patients that the author couldn't help. This may be because their style of treatment doesn't mesh with us, or because we don't give them the chance to make their points. That said, don't give up on therapy just because you don't like your therapist or are not seeing immediate results. What in the world, you may wonder, do people talk about in therapy? Surely, you talk about your problems, but how does this solve anything? While venting helps to soothe the aches that come with life's difficulties, therapy is a lot more subtle than that. A crucial factor that determines the success of your treatment is your experience of feeling felt. This comes from the relationship you build with your therapist. You are meant to interact with them, and from there, your therapist gets to know you. Not just your problems, but you as a person. A therapist collects all the parts of you that you show them and extrapolate from there. Keeping these snapshots in mind, they look for a common thread while shaping an accurate picture of you. You may not need to tell them anything because your interactions will do that for you. Your therapist will always be a few steps ahead of you even if it seems like nothing is happening. They are building trust with us so that they can guide us where we want to go. Even if we don't see it yet, they hold hope for us that we can get there. Make no mistake of it, therapy is difficult. It strips us down and exposes us, brings to light all the insecurities that we're so used to hiding. We are used to ignoring what is wrong, consciously or not, whether we know what that is or not. However, for therapy to work, we must be open to the experience. Our therapist will do their best to help, 
but we must be brave enough to be accountable and vulnerable enough for there to be any effect. The experience is meant to be uncomfortable. Your therapist will try their best to soften the blow, but it's up to you to accept the truths they present. We cannot avoid this forever. Once we know and understand what our feelings are telling us, there is more work to do. We have to change the way we respond to things, seeing from beyond the patterns we have established for ourselves. The space between stimulus and response is where we must act so that we can be free from suffering. In therapy, we learn to listen to the voices in our heads and learn a better way to communicate with ourselves. For all that we think that therapy can solve our problems, it isn't the thing that will necessarily save our lives. At least, probably not in the way that we want or expect. When we're in crisis, we want someone to do something, preferably immediately, especially the someone that we're paying to solve our problems. Unfortunately, they can't make our decisions for us. Even if they have the right answers, it's up to us to take those steps. For one thing, people hate being told what to do. For another, when we're embroiled in the negativity and turmoil caused by our issues, we often make what we hear fit our preferred narrative. We misconstrue our therapists because that's more convenient and comfortable for us. The role of the therapist is to understand our perspective and from there get us to see the full image that it creates. They are not here to agree with us, especially not our biased standpoints. They are not meant to validate us or blindly endorse our opinions. Most importantly, getting therapy won't give us all the answers. It just equips us with better tools and knowledge to get there ourselves. One of the hurdles of making progress in therapy is the way we see and present ourselves. Often, we only tell the parts of the story that we think are relevant and it takes coaxing to move on from there. The author herself does this, focusing on her ex-boyfriend and his actions instead of herself. The way we tell our stories is also very distorted. We tend to leave out what details and aspects that we don't agree with. There are multiple ways to view a story and sometimes we can't or don't want to see them all. We need to be truthful to ourselves and our therapists before we can get anywhere. And it is as we slowly come to embrace this trust that things change. The story that we tell about ourselves becomes clearer. We are used to talking to ourselves in a certain way and this is the same way that we talk about ourselves. Unfortunately, we paint a negative picture. For one of the patients the author talks about, the patient paints everyone else in a bad light. But the truth stands that we are rarely honest, even to ourselves. It's become a stereotype that therapists always want to talk about your parents. Well, there's a solid basis for this, and it goes beyond the idea that parents are the ones who mess their kids up. It can't be denied that our early experiences shape the people that we become as adults. Our experiences, what we see and hear, teach us how to deal with things. Unfortunately, sometimes we follow this blindly, not knowing that our techniques are wrong or need an upgrade. In this way, the past will always shape our present and future. Our parents are in the same trap as us. Knowing this, we are better equipped to figure out how to handle this truth. In therapy and beyond, we can easily get trapped by obsessing in the past. But we must remember that the past doesn't define us. Rather, it helped us become what we are and can be manipulated such that we can use it to become better. The thing about therapy is that it's a parallel process. Not only are you learning and benefiting from your experience of therapy, but your therapist is too. That might be alarming to think about. After all, we want the person who's supposed to be fixing us to be smart, capable, and preferably all-knowing. While therapists are indeed trained to handle your crises, it always pays to remember that therapists are humans too. They face all of the same issues that we do, like work stress, relationship problems, making rent, and raising their kids. What your therapist might have learned from another patient may inform them of how to help treat you. In turn, you might be helping someone else too. As your therapist gets a better grasp of who you are as a person, they know how to better proceed with your treatment. And as they watch you grow from your experience, they get something out of it too. Even with physical illnesses, there are multiple strategies to tackle the problem. With mental health issues, things can be much more complicated. This is in part because the solution to your problems has to come from yourself. As we all know, humans tend to make mistakes. Sometimes the things that we do to solve our problems won't necessarily be perfect fixes. You might just hit another wall later on. When it comes to knowing when you have graduated from therapy, there are a few clues. What isn't a good indicator is feeling less, however. Instead, if you find yourself anticipating the reactions of your therapist during real-time events when you hear their voice inside, you are ready. The important thing to remember is that even with the most perfect circumstances, life doesn't always go smoothly. That's just how life is. You may hurt, or you may inevitably hurt someone. The crucial point is that you've reached your goals and have gotten good enough at dealing with your life that you can do it all on your own. Besides, you can always go back if you need more help.